As always, please pause the video and try the question before moving on. This is a projectile motion question, and in order to complete most projectile motion questions, it's useful to organize the information into the following table. We can begin by filling in the initial velocities in the x and y directions, and to do that, let's zero in on the shooter right here. Now he's launching the ball at an initial velocity that we do not know and an angle of 40 degrees. What we need to do is break that initial velocity into an x and a y component. Let's go ahead and do that. The x component will be v naught times the cosine of 40, and the y component will be v naught times the sine of 40. If you have any questions about where those come from, please let me know. What we need to do is fill those initial velocities in for the x and y direction. We can also note that the acceleration in the x direction is 0 meters per second squared, but in the y direction it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared because of the force of gravity. Time is unknown in both the x and the y direction, but they will be the same time, so we can simply label them with t. The displacement in the x direction is given as 10 meters. For the y direction, it's a bit more troubling, but let's take a look at it and we'll be able to determine it. We'll note that the ball begins right here as it leaves the hand of the shooter and finishes as it enters the basket. What we need to determine is that overall vertical displacement, which I'm labeling right here with the double-headed arrows. And if we notice, we have this height of 3.05 meters up to the top line and this height of 2 meters up to the bottom line. All we need to do is simply subtract those two numbers in order to get the vertical displacement of the ball. And of course, that gives us 1.05 meters. Now, since the acceleration in the x direction is zero, that means the velocity is not changing. It's neither speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. So we can fill in the same velocity for the final of the x direction. The y direction final velocity is unknown to us. We next turn to the equations of kinematics. In particular, we're going to explore this equation in both the x and the y direction. Since we seem to know a little bit more information in the x direction, let's start there. And we can do so by plugging the known values into this equation. We have zero for the acceleration as noted, and when we multiply these three terms out, they cancel away. What we'll do is solve this equation for time and then use that expression over in the y direction information. So let's divide both sides by v naught cosine 40. Here's the expression for time, and because the time in the x direction is the same as the time in the y direction, we can use this expression for our y direction information. So let's go ahead and circle that, hang on to it, and move over to the y direction using this same equation. We'll go ahead and plug in the known values in the y direction. Keep in mind that although we have delta x here, that's really delta y in this case, which was 1.05. Recalling that time was given by this expression, we can plug that in for both this time here and also that time there. Somewhat conveniently, we have v0 in the numerator here and v0 in the denominator there, so those can cancel out. We can now pick up our calculators and enter in this information here, and then also enter in this information here. Now it gets a little tricky over here. You just have to multiply a half times negative 9.8 times 10 squared and then divide by cosine 40 squared. Remember the cosine 40 is also squared. So let's simplify this. Notice that the v naught is also squared because it was part of the inside of these parentheses earlier. The rest is relatively basic algebra. Why don't we subtract 8.39 from both sides? We could then put this result over one and cross multiply. And when you finish off solving for v naught, you should get 10.7 and the unit of velocity would be meters per second. 